we should be good to go. All right, energy conservation, we've talked about Cugus and how kinetic energy and potential energy works together. Uh, today, I want to go over a special concept in this type of energy conservation called the ballistic pendulum. And I think we should be able to have enough to be able to solve these problems at the current moment. We just have to be a little bit careful with what information that we're given at the very beginning. Keep in mind, we're looking at this one specifically from an energy standpoint. So we're gonna look at how to actually kind of handle these problems, dealing with like kinetic and potential energy and how that actually works out. And here's what a ballistic pendulum is. You take a block and you tie it to make a pendulum like this. So like you've got a block just like hanging from the ceiling or from a from a pipe or or something, but it's but, but it's hanging there, okay? And then you hit it with something, usually some kind of projectile. So I'm gonna make like a bullet to show that this bullet is speeding at the box. Okay, so we have the box that is hanging, and we have the bullet that is traveling towards the box. This would be the initial condition. And then once the bullet hits the box, what's going to happen? It does start swinging, right? So whenever it swings, it's going to try to reach some maximum height. And after it reaches that maximum height, it's going to fall back down. So it will reach, say, a height up here. And the bullet can either do one of two things. It can either get stuck inside or it can pass straight through. Uh, in the case of what we're going to worry about right now, the bullet's going to hit and it's going to get stuck instead of like straight through. Uh, we'll study a couple of other cases later on where we can actually make a little bit more determinations from this uh, besides just doing the, the getting stuck in there. Uh, but that's going to be the final condition. And if we were to let this thing just like keep going, because you got your initial and you got your final, in real life, once it hits, it'll just like swing back and forth, right? We're not really interested in the swinging part. We're only really interested in the first pullback because whenever you get that first pullback, that's whenever it gets the most amount of energy stored inside of it. So we're going to try to figure out how to do this. Um, the easiest way to do this is by just doing Cuggis. And I think that we should be able to do it and get away with it. Um, let's add a couple of numbers here. Let's say that this bullet is a 5 gram bullet. So I'm going to write 0 0.005 kilograms. 5 grams sounds like a big number, but if it's 5 grams, it's kind of small. Uh, let's say that the block itself is 3 kilograms. And we need a realistic speed for a bullet. So, okay, so that'll be about 400 meters per second. Uh, to go from miles per hour to meters per second, roughly cut it in half, and you've got a general idea. Uh, is it exact? No. Does it work? Sure. It, it's good enough for government. So you've got a velocity of about 400 meters per second, which sounds pretty darn fast to me for a bullet speed. Um, so... Normally, something that's five grams wouldn't really be that bad, but it becomes very, very bad when it's going 400 meters per second. Um, very dangerous. At the end, it raises up a certain height, and I think that's what we want to try to find, because I think we should be able to have everything else except for how high does the uh, object go. I think that's what we're going to be looking for. So let's try this out. Um, Let's do our Cuggis on this side. So we write out our LOL chart. Let's put our Cuggis down here. Cuggis. All right. Do we have kinetic energy? Uh, well, okay, let's do, you're right. Because what is the system? Bullet puck earth. Okay. So if the bullet and the puck and the earth are all energy that we have to think about, do we have kinetic energy at the beginning? 
how much energy should I give it? Right, the bullet is traveling, right? So it is kinetic energy. Do I give it like halfway? It's Yeah, it's not going to be the same after it hits. Because it's going to hit and then it's going to slow down, right? At the other side, for our Cuggis, how much kinetic energy will we have? We'll have none. Yeah, you're right. Because this thing is going to reach up to the very, very top, and then it's going to stop. Once it reaches the top position for the height, the pendulum part will stop completely, so there's no kinetic energy there. Okay, now what about UG? Hundred percent UG? Well then would that make this over here a hundred oh wait. Where is a hundred percent UG? Over here on the right side? Okay. That makes sense to me. What about on the left side? Do we have any gravitational potential energy on the left side? The block is suspended in the air, yeah. So you could either say yes or no. Here's what I would do. I would just like say this part right here, this is zero. Okay, because remember with gravitational potential energy, you can set <coughs> you can set a zero point. Okay, so that's what I would do. I would set a zero point right there at the three kilogram mark. And then whenever it reaches up at the very top, that gravitational potential energy will just be from zero to H, or from zero to that height, which is what we were looking for anyway. So I setting that to zero would be a good start. Could you have a bar there and then make the bar go higher? Yes. But then that just, that just kind of ends up being more confusing uh, because what you're really looking for is you're looking for this energy that got spent uh, and the rest of it would just stay the same. Okay, does that make sense? It would be, yeah. So, like, we write down everything that we have in the Cuggis, and on the left side, we have one half our mass times our velocity squared, and on the other side, we have UG, so that's MGH. Um, however, we have to be a little bit careful because these two things are not the same. So, the first one, this is going to be the mass of the bullet. And the second one is going to be the mass of what? Both the block and the bullet combined. So we're going to have to add them both. <coughs> so we've got to be careful there. Okay, so we've got one half mv squared equals one half or equals mgh. Let's uh let's plug and chug and see what happens. So one half. Little math, 0 0.005 uh, times the velocity 400 squared, uh, that's going to be a big number, equals the mass 3.005 times acceleration due to gravity, 10 meters per second squared, and h. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the height. So, um, calculator time, yeah. Good news is it's 3.005 times 10 is just 30.05. Uh, let's see here. I don't know, half a 0 0.005 really doesn't help me out too much. I could cut this in half, but I'm just going to wait for you guys to calculate it out for me. One half times 0 0.005 times 400 squared. Really? <laughs> oh, okay. Oops. I didn't mean to do that, but it comes out to be 400. On the dot, you'd think that I planned it, but I did not. Uh, so then the height is just going to be uh, 400 divided by 30.05, and that's your height, which is going to be in meters. 13.3 meters. This better be a really big pendulum. Uh, so I hope you got like if it's supposed to rise 13.3 meters you're going to need a lot of string to be able to actually do that rise. Um, but that being said, um, 
400 meters per second is going really, really fast. And three kilograms isn't super heavy for something to like hit inside of it and stop completely inside. So it's going to like, as soon as it hits, it's going to eat that thing uh, really far up high. So this better be a really lengthy pendulum in order to get that 13.3 meters. If it was not a lengthy pendulum, what it normally does is if you have it like tied to a pipe, it'll hit and then it'll flip around in a circle. So instead of like going up and then and then like to some height, it'll just flip around the circle until it runs out of string and wraps around itself. Okay. It's like, yeah, all the way, all through the, it, it would do 13.3 meters through a circle. Yeah. Uh, right. So this is actually a lot larger bullet. Yeah. So I was a little heavy on my, on my bullet trajectory. Uh, yeah, you would you would end up getting like half the height if you used a a twenty two bullet. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, I got lots of fun stuff here. All right, water slide time then. Water slide time. Everybody good? Got this? Okay. Um, let's see, we are going to calculate what happens when a person goes down a water slide. I'm going to try to draw this water slide, and I'm not going to do a very good job. And it's going to go up like this, and then it ends right here. Okay, whenever it ends, this person is going to wee, fall off like this. So they're going to like slide and then they're going to like projectile off of the slide. We're going to say that the height over here is just called h. And we're going to say that at the end of the slide, so it's going to dip down and then go back up. At the other end of the slide, it's going to reach a height of h over 5. So we're going to, uh, from, from height to one-fifth of the height. Okay, and what we want to do is, I believe, we want to try to find out either the speed or the, let's see here. Uh, we want to try to find the maximum airborne height in terms of H, and theta. No. So uh, h, we need to answer with h and theta. But what we're looking for is we're looking for this maximum height. What letter do you want to give that? Obviously, it's not going to be h over 5. No, no, no. we got to give it a letter. We can't give it a number. Pi over 2 is a number. You can call it d? not cool enough you want to get fancy Zed. do what zed how do you write zed oh z you want to okay 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 uh, you're right you're right that's i thought you were going greek on me but that's zeta uh so you want to call it z um okay most normal human beings would call that the y direction but i guess that's okay we can call it z and and be fine we can call it zed uh, and, and we'll be, you know what, it gets the answer right either way. That's what we're looking for, that amazing sideways in. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so what would we do? How would we start this? You can do LOL? Do Cuggis? The angle from, like, the flat surface to where they begin their trajectory, that's theta right here. Okay, so there is an angle there. Um, so where do we start our LOL chart? Like what do you, because there are three critical positions here. Uh, position one, this makes sense to me, right? Position two makes sense to me, and this is ultimately what we need. 
But these are three snapshots that we can have with our LOL chart. Do you want to just do LOL, LOL? You only need uh, you only need one O. You don't need both. You don't need two O's because it's going to be the same system either way. So if you want to write LOL, LOL, you can just to make your life feel better. Uh, but I I'm only going to write one because we only really need one for our system. And I'm probably going to make that circle a little bit higher too so that we can actually write stuff in it. There. What is our uh, what is our system, by the way? Person or system? Does a sled does does a slide really even matter? No. Not really. Right, it's frictionless. We're go we're gonna you know what we're gonna assume that it's frictionless uh, because they didn't mention anything about friction in the problem, so we're just gonna assume that it's frictionless. So yeah, I, I think this is just gonna be a person Earth system. So really, when we're talking about energy here, we're only really worried about the person them themselves and where they actually are, okay? So let's do, let's do Cuggus. Let's see where this goes. Cuggus, Cuggus, Cuggus. These poor random people on the internet that watch my YouTube videos. They're like, I don't even know what this guy's doing. Kinetic, gravitational potential energy, and spring potential energy. Or, sp yeah, spring potential energy. Um, do we have any kinetic energy at the very beginning? Do we? It is all gravitational potential. All right. We got a formula for gravitational potential. OK, so we know at the very beginning this is all mgh. Uh, I am assuming that little m is going to be the mass of the person, right? OK, uh, what about at the next spot? Do we have kinetic energy? Do we have potential energy? Uh, since it's h over 5, it actually wouldn't be half and half, because there's going to be actually a less amount. The, you, you will get half of the potential energy at h over 2. But you've got h over 5, so I'm going to make this bar a little bit shorter than our halfsies, but as long as we show on this chart that we have two energies here, like there's a little bit of kinetic energy and there's a little bit of potential energy, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll get the concept down because we're not really going to get any like math from the graphs. We're just visualizing what's happening here. Uh, we don't know what the y value is. Like, like we don't know what the height value is at the top of Z, but we know it can't be 100% potential, right? Yeah. So is it going to be a greater amount of potential or a smaller amount of potential? So from, so from Z, compared to the beginning, is it going to be greater or less than? H over 5. So from here to here. It's going to be greater? Yeah, because it gets higher, right? So there's going to be more potential energy, and there's going to be less kinetic energy. Okay, so these bars are going to do this. My brain, it hurts so bad. Why is this happening to me? Um, okay, so we know that the kinetic energy here is 1 half mv squared. This is mgh. Now we have a slight problem here because this is also 1 half mv squared and this is mgh. But mm, but these velocities are not these velocities are not going to be the same, right? Cuz when you when you're leaving off of the slide right here, your velocity is going to be in a straight line path outward from where you left the slide. Whenever you're at z, what's your velocity going to be? So what do you, you want to call that, like v1? OK. You want to call this v2? What direction should I put it? That way? OK, that, that way has a name. <laughs> that way has a name. It's, it's, it's flat. 
that's not yeah, horizontal. Yeah, so we'll call that horizontal line. We'll call that V2. Okay, that horizontal line is going to be very important because what is the angle between the ground and the horizontal line? Hmm? Not theta. Zero, right? Because if you're on a horizontal line, you're you're pretty much at zero degrees with the ground. You're parallel. Okay, there theta will be at v1, but not at v2. It does, yeah. So like technically v2 sh should be related to v1, so that there should be a relationship between v2 and v1. the The horizontal velocity at v2 should be the same thing as the horizontal velocity at v1. So what we really need to do is we need to try to find that vertical uh, velocity in order to try to get everything in terms of uh, in, to get everything in terms of what what are we what were we even looking for h and theta I think right okay because because if we try to answer this out we shouldn't have any v's left inside of it okay which is going to be a slight problem to us we can try to solve it right now. Um, and then try to fix the V's later. So I can write V1 down here and then V2 for this guy. And we can try to solve it out and we can see um, what we can come up with. Now, I don't see Z down there anywhere. Oh, okay. So down here at the bottom, this MGH is really MG z right okay and there's one more correction that we need to make as well and it's this guy this isn't really mgh is it that's going to be mgh over five right so that's going to be mgh oh crap it's still red uh that's going to be mgh over five so i'm going to put h over five here and we should be able to solve using any one of these formulas. So we can set the left and the right equal to each other. So like the first part of the LOL chart, or we can set the second part of the LOL chart equal to each other. Which way do you think would be um, the easiest and the least amount of doom? So we could do this, or we could do this. Because technically they should have the same energy at all times, right? So all three of these expressions are the same. Equal. You could do MGH and then the one half MV two squared. Yeah, you could. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to take this one and this one, and we're going to set them equal to each other. So at the very beginning of the slide, we have a total energy of mass times gravity times the height. And at the very end, when we're looking for the maximum height, we're going to have this 1 half mv2 squared plus mgz. Is everybody okay with that? Hmm, okay. Well, we're almost there. Um, first of all, Everybody did bring mass to the party. So since everybody brought mass to the party, we can get rid of that. So by, by, by. I'm just going to divide everything by m. And since this is, you know, algebra, we can do that. That's legal. Uh, so that leaves you with gh equals 1 half v2 squared plus gz. Now, our, our problem now that we have is v2 isn't in terms of h and theta so we should we we need to be able to get v2 in terms because that's horizontal right okay uh so we need to get that in terms of h and theta we know that it got launched at an angle so i i do know that it actually did do that um let's try this at the very beginning you know that it has a velocity of v1 kind of going out at some angle right 
and there's a horizontal and a vertical and v2 is the horizontal right but if i wanted to um let's see here i'm right theta there and this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be a uh, the vertical so this would be v1 sine theta right what would this one be down here okay so that means that our horizontal velocity is the exact same thing as v1 cosine theta because if we just look at the triangle from the horizontal standpoint the first velocity times the cosine of that angle in between it is going to be the same thing as our horizontal velocity on the other side because the horizontal velocity inside any type of projectile motion doesn't change. So we can say that V2 and V1 cosine theta are the same thing. Okay, now that helps a little bit, but we still don't know what, um, we still don't know what V2 is or V1. So how can we try to get V1 or V2 in terms of just the height I think we can also use G as well. So that, yeah, this is where kinematics are going to start to come in. So yeah, we, we might need to connect uh, the left side and the right side equal to each other. Um, you got to be a little bit careful though, uh, because V one actually i think that'll work pretty good because if you set v2 and v1 equal to each other we can actually get them to cancel out i think if we do that i was going to do it a lot more complicated way so I, I think that'll actually work out pretty well um <laughs> let's let's try this so we're going to set this guy we're going to set this guy equal to each other so that's um one half m v1 squared plus m g h over 5 is equal to 1 half m v2 squared plus m g z. Now I know that v2 is the same thing as v1 cosine theta. So whenever I have v2 over on the right side, I can make that v1 cosine theta. Um, everybody brought mass to the party, right? Let's go ahead and get rid of that first. That way we don't have to write them. That makes our life easier. So I'm going to get rid of the m's. That's going to be 1 half v1 squared plus gh over s equals 1 half. Now, v2 is really v1 squared cosine squared theta and if you square a cosine you write it like this cosine squared instead of cosine theta squared that's just how they do it sorry um and then plus g z so if you've never seen that before that's just the notation that means that it is the cosine of theta times the cosine of theta or regularly spoken by human beings as cosine squared theta okay Bad news, if we divide both sides by V1 squared, it'll still be there. That's a problem. Okay, so like I liked your idea. Oh, let's try, let's try it. Let's get them on the same side. Let's try that, okay, okay. Let's take this uh, 1 half V1 squared mess and let's put it over there. So I've got 1 half V1 squared and I'm gonna subtract this over, minus 1 half v1 squared cosine squared theta and then i guess you wanted to move this gh over s to the other side g negative gh over five sorry i said s that's a five where did s come from there gh over five plus gz now I don't know. I don't really want to make this like super more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, so what I might end up doing is we might just solve for Z and leave the V1 in there and, and, and be okay. 
uh, because this was taken from the Book of Evil, and uh, even for AP Physics, there's some things that you just don't have to get into. So we may just solve this for Z and be like, all right, we're good, uh, and be just fine with that. Can you s can this be simplified down any at all? I guess you can take a v one a one half v one squared out, right? Hmm. I don't really know if that's going to do us any good, but. All right, so I can pull out a 1 half v1 squared. 1 minus cosine squared theta would be left. Well, see, the problem is we, we did all this fancy stuff with setting these equal to each other, but there's still a v1 squared in the equation. And we really just wanted to get rid of the V1 altogether. There's, there's got to be a simpler way to do this. There's got to be a simpler way to do this. You, you want to keep going? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> the, now, what, what, what we could do is, and, and what I'm trying to encourage you to think about is that this v1 squared can be written in terms of kinematics. So like this would be um, an initial velocity and you could use either like vf equals vi plus gt, especially if it's like vertical straight up and down, uh, or vf squared equals vi squared plus two uh, gd, right? Uh, or displacement equals VIT. We definitely don't want to use the bottom one. Never mind. That's got time in it. No. That's got time in it. No. It'd have to be like one of these. That that second one is kind of the one I'm thinking of right there that relates the two velocities equal to each other. Okay. Can can we Can we agree that this... Sounded like a really good idea, but we probably don't want to do. That's fair. All right. So let's <laughs> let's think back to kinematics then. At the very beginning of the slide, you had a initial vertical velocity, right? At the end, at Z, what is your vertical velocity? Your vertical velocity. You, you do know. Okay, look, you, I'm, you're only thinking about the upward direction here. So we're going up, we're going up, we're going up, we're going up, we're going nowhere. So what's your final velocity? Zero. Okay. So if we use that equation with Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2AD, one of those is zero, okay? So the Vf, in this case, the final velocity is zero for Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2G times, by the way, this would be the height, right? Z, because uh, we're just moving up that, that specific height, okay? Now... Um, vi is v, v1, right? Um, it's the vertical. So what's the vertical for v1? It's right here. It's the sine, right? Okay, so this is going to be uh, v1 squared sine squared theta plus 2gz equals 0. Okay? Move this over. This is going to be negative 2gz over. Uh, we're going to divide it by sine squared, right? And that will leave you with v1. It, we will get a negative for the square root. So here's what you do whenever terrible things like that happen. You say, oh, gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second. So that's going to be 
negative 2 times negative 9.8, and that's going to get rid of that. Okay? So you should get that V1 is equal to the square root of GZ over the sine squared of theta. And you can uh, take the square root of the sine squared, and that cancels to just sine. So we could say V1 is equal to square root of GZ over sine theta. There we go. Now, if we could just take that, and we could put it back in up here. Oh, crap. Where did the 2 go? That's actually a really good question. Um, the answer is I have devoured it. Um, it goes there under the square root. So it's going to be under the square root of 2 GZ. You are correct. The 2 should not have vanished. Divided by sine theta. Is that better? Okay. So my recommendation is if you have to change that over, I would think about it in terms of kinematics. I wouldn't try to think about it in terms of setting them equal to zero and trying to eliminate variables because <laughs> that got, I don't know, that got pretty hairy. Um, but I will, I, I will go ahead and say that if you know a little bit of trig, um, one minus cosine squared theta is sine squared theta. So we were getting close to the same spot. Okay, so we can now take that um, and we can plug it in for V1. And then we can use that to solve for our um, solution. Do, do, do I have enough time to actually finish this out? What, what time do we get out of here? 32? Oh, crap. Okay. Five minutes to save the world. Um, all right. So we now know what V1 is in terms of sine theta. So... Let's look at um, setting MGH equal to this section, and we can plug in that V1. Okay. It's basically the same thing. MGH is equal to uh, 1 half M. V1 squared is going to be the square root of 2GZ over sine theta squared, right? plus m g h over 5. All right, if you square root the square root of 2 g z, that becomes just 2 g z, right? So it's 1 half mass times 2 g z over sine squared theta. You can go ahead and get rid of mass too. Yeah, make your life easier. Don't be like me. We can get rid of those. Okay, um, over here we've got plus G H over 5, and over here you've got G H. So all we have to do now is solve for Z, and we're good to go. Uh, take away G H over 5 from both sides. So this is a fifth, one-fifth G H, and this is one whole G H. So what is one minus a fifth? So we got four fifths GH is equal to one half two GZ over sine squared theta. Okay, multiply both sides by two. Eight fifths GH equals. Oh, wait, that was dumb. Hang on, I'm sorry. Yeah. I already did take out a fifth. A fifth minus a whole is four fifths. Yeah, we only need we only need one we only need one equal sign. So the smarter way to do that, I'm sorry, these twos cancel out. Bye. You don't have to worry about those. Uh, everybody brought G to the party, so those actually cancel out too. Um, strangely enough. So the answer to this one, we're going to move sine squared over. So that's going to be 4 fifths sine squared theta times h equals z. Congratulations, you have been traumatized.
Well, we, we kind of went down the wrong angle the first time, yeah. <laughs> right? I think, uh, I think the important thing to consider with this one is if you find a route and it doesn't seem to really be working, try to think of it through a different pair of lenses. Like, try to think about it through the kinematic equations or try to think about it through energy or stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Can't even find the mouse. There it is.